Hey everybody, welcome in that uh, new tutorial which will show how you can render your crowd using Claris. So for this tutorial I'm using Golem 8.2 and I'm using Claris 5.0 SP9 so make sure that you're using at least those two versions for this tutorial to work. So in uh, Maya with Golem, I created a pretty uh, simple simulation of just uh, characters walking in the same direction. As you can see, the timeline is green, which means I've been exporting my simulation as a cache. And if I want to be able to bring that cache within Caris, I need to export that crowd as a USD skeleton. So from Caris 5.9, uh, 5.0, sorry, you can uh, now use USD as import files and uh, in SP9 they've been fixing the way uh, attributes can be used so you can even benefit from uh, shading diversity which we're going to play with. So from uh, the simulation exporter, I'll go into the Baker tab, I'll go into the USD sub tab, make sure that I enable it. As soon as I have enabled it, I can decide what the start and the end frame of the simulation I want to export, which entity I want to export. So star stands for um, all the entity from my simulation, part of the render proxy shape, so which means all those characters there. I can decide where I export my crowd and make sure that you're picking USD skeleton as um, the USD mode. So I'll let you figure um, which tags you want to use here, uh, which options you want to use here basically default one should be good enough. So I'm gonna bake my simulation here so I go through um, you know all the frames, write my postures as a USD skeleton file format, also write my uh, typos character as a USD asset and when it's gonna be done we'll have um, I think two or three files so let's check. We've got uh, one file which represents the typos character which I'm using in the scene here I'm just using one character file so I'm just having one character here I'm having a pretty empty materials files which will not be uh, of any use with uh, Clarice at the moment. And finally I have my main um, posture file so which references uh, the typos characters and all the posture. So that's the file I can actually import within Clarice so you can see it's 200 megabytes for 150 frames. So let's jump into Clarice now and what I want to do is um, to add uh, into my scene a new reference and that reference will be the USD file I have just exported. So let's bring that file. So I've been exported from frame 1 uh, to frame 150 and obviously at frame 1 we don't have anything within Golem so you need to move anywhere between frame 2 and the 150 so you can see it's loading here all the geometries and the postures in the background and as soon as it's fully loaded I'll just let it apply uh, all the materials and uh, all the postures so still loading and as soon as it will be loaded uh, you'll get um, you know your all your characters exact the exact same posture than the one you've been simulated if you applied some layout operations on the characters you will you will have it uh, as well too and um, also in that uh, scene I already created some standing for the materials I created a body material a hair material and a t-shirt material I've been creating a um, shading layer um, in the scene 2 and I've been applying all the meshes which contain t-shirt in the name uh, applied to the t-shirt material, uh, body to the body material and hair to the air material. And I switch also um, the view to the um, actual default uh, shading layer here. So let's see if I can move here in time. Yeah, great. So okay, now my characters have been loaded. Uh, I can see that um, you know if I move in time, that um, USD skeleton file gets updated, and I can see that my character's postures changes as well. And uh, now I can show you how you can um, make the right um, uh, assign assignation here for your characters. So here, body material has been assigned to every single mesh uh, which contains a body. If I expand this, I can see you know all my various entities. It's a USD skeleton file. So for NTT 1001, for example, um, there was a way, some point to expand this. I'm not a, you know, a, a great uh, user of Clarice, so I may miss some uh, easier step here. So here, yeah, I'm having some geometry nodes called the uh, body, for example. So they take the same 
um, you know, names than the one you've been defining to the character maker here. So here, every, everything which has body into the name is part of the body mesh assignment. Same goes for the t-shirts and goes for everything. So you can explore that USD file by jumping into it if you want to, and you can see what are the name of the various geometries and they follow what's been defined into the, um, the character file within Maya and, and go on. So the body material here, let's open it. And uh, right now it's not assigned to anything. So what I want to do is uh, bring a, um, maybe a skin tone there. Oops. Oops. So that's my, um, it's just the skin map here uh, that um, I've been applied. And obviously if I bring it to the front color there, you can see that all the characters get assigned with the same. Uh, the thing is within Golem, we've been defining some shading diversity for that uh, mesh here. So let's expand it. And let's go into um, the body group, for example. And the coats, body arms. So for example, we've been defining that there is a, uh, an attribute which will be assigned to the characters, which will be called man MD body texture index, which is gonna be an integer with a value between zero and two. So we can take advantage of that attribute within Clarity. So I can break that connection here. It's probably a faster way to do it, but damn. Okay, I'm not sure how you break it. Here we go. No. Sorry if there's something obvious that I missed, but whatever. You know what? What I'll do is just I'll create a switch. So there's a node part of the Claris uh, package called texture switch. I can connect that one to the front, and now I've got uh, my disconnection of the rest. So uh, let me review that now quickly. It has an opacity entry, some input entry, and textures. So textures with nest means that I can plug as many textures as I want to here. Uh, so means that I can take here, remember my um, my uh, attribute was between zero and two. So it means that it could be zero, one or two. So I can have three different choices. So I'm gonna bring three different textures there. And what I want to um, do is to drive the input of that um, switch based on the attribute. So I'm gonna bring a property, extract, extract property, no there. Oops. And I don't want to connect it to the color. Sorry. Let's redo this again. Extract property. And I'm gonna connect the extra property into uh, the input. And within the property name, I can search uh, the various properties which are available on the, in the scene. And you can see we've got the man MD body texture index. And as soon as I set it, now my free various textures get assigned to my characters. So great, I'm having um, texture variation here based on a Clarice graph being assigned thanks to the shading layer editor. Um, next, let's see how we can apply some uh, texture diversity for a t-shirt. So let uh, me open the t-shirt material and let me bring once again a texture and connect it. So that's a blue um, t-shirt texture. And so now you can see all my characters get assigned with a blue t-shirt. So once again, if I pay attention to what I've been doing here, um, undercoat, let's check the textures. Um, and uh, let's check the t-shirt there. So for the t-shirt, we've been applying, uh, wait, on the code, sweatshirt, t-shirt, there. So for the t-shirt mesh, we've been defining a floating um, shading attribute, which is called man MD torso t-shirt H. So H here will stand for you, but whatever the name once again. Uh, it's a flow value randomly assigned between minus one and one. So, you know, you can think about uh, this attribute as a way to change the, the color assignment of an actual texture. So make a U variation uh, on uh, a color there. So let's go back into um, into Claris once again. And if I, you know, check for U, I've got a um, UTT node called texture U. So I'm gonna bring uh, my input there. So I'm gonna take the color of my, um, of my map, well, my map actually, my RGB values of my map, bring the front color there and put the U in between. So you may notice nothing has changed so far. So that's because we need to also provide some value for the U here. So, you know, you can provide uh, some variation there um, um, 
either negative or positive value there and it changes the value of um, the visual of uh, the um, texture here and once again if I want to I can just apply an extract property node connect it to the u value there and what I'm gonna say is that the property I want to pick is gonna be my texture t-shirt h value and you can see that as soon as I connect the right attribute into my extract property it's read properly and now every single character gets assigned with a um, different value. So for the rest, um, that reference here is a casual um, Clarice node. So whatever you can do with a Clarice geometry, you can do it once again with that geometry there because that's just USD file. So it's pretty, um, you know, um, a standard and the way it's treated by Clarice is the same uh, than for the rest. So if you need to apply motion blur and that kind of stuff, um, you know, there will be the casual stuff. Um, for the rest of the, the same geo. So all that helps and um, see you into the next uh, tutorial.